Aloha, how y'all doing today? Uh, William McDaniel Albritton, and uh, we'll talk about uh, webcasts and podcasts and wikis and search engines and also how to identify a, um, what, uh, a, a website, whether it's bogus or not. Okay, so let's uh, jump into the slides and see what we got for today. All right, so this first one here, what, we'll talk about webcast. And it's a media presentation. Could be audio, could be video, okay, it could be kind of radio-ish or TV-ish. And this is for live uh, broadcasts, typically. So you got one source, and then you got uh, lots and lots of, say, listeners or viewers. And, you know, it, it can be the established radio and TV stations, uh, but because uh, the low cost of this media, uh, a lot of independent media also can now take advantage of the uh, webcast. All right, so that's uh, one um, technology we use. Let's see, so another technology on the web that we uh, use is called a podcast. And um, this got pretty popular with the iPod when that came out. But usually it's a, a series of episodes and um, you subscribe to these media files and typically we download to our computer, so it's not streaming. And a lot of times, too, we put on a portable uh, device, uh, such as the iPod, hence its name. So a lot of this is user-generated content, music, talk shows, tutorials, TV shows. So podcasts are pretty cool. Um, so really level the playing field and um, you know, before we have like the big TV stations, uh, big media corporations, um, they're kind of controlling what we listen to and see. But uh, now with the podcasts, you know, pretty much everyone can get on here and, you know, state their opinion or, or, or you know, give us different kind of news from different, uh, a different political stance or different opinions, that kind of thing. Okay, and then, then it's kind of cool too because the people that are viewing these things are also creating these. So it's really kind of shook things up a bit with the media. All right, let's see. Uh, next part here, we'll talk about uh, wikis. So the, uh, what is a wiki? Hmm. So again, we're talking about websites, but this is where the users collaborate. And collaboration's big these days, yeah. So we collaborate to edit the content. And if wiki sounds familiar, uh, it's a Hawaiian word, yeah? So it means uh, hurry or quick or fast. Um, and uh, the big example, of course, is Wikipedia. Um, and uh, like we are saying, it's created by a community of people, usually experts in the field, whatever they're, they're talking about. But, okay, you also have uh, trade-offs. They have potential for misuse. So anyone can edit the content. So um, what do you got? You got the, the, the people that are making the content and they're checking things out. Okay, is this legit or not? And then you can have people getting in here. Um, an example with Wikipedia was, uh, you know, certain political parties will get on the other political party website and change things. Um, but then everyone's also can look and view these things, so, you know, you can, you can catch these things pretty quick. Uh, but I have heard that the Wikipedia is, you know, as accurate as uh, the regular encyclopedia, you know, all those books that uh, we used to have back in the day. I uh, hope you all know what the books are these days. Anyway, uh, let's see the next, next thing we'll, we'll talk about here. Let's look at the uh, search engines. Okay, that's, uh, you know, whenever you're looking for something, you use a search engine here. So that's, you're looking for information on the World Wide Web, typically. And uh, what else about it? So some popular ones, and, and you know, y'all are probably already familiar with most, most of these. So Google's big. Uh, Bing, that's from the Microsoft and Yahoo. Those, those are the three big ones in the States. And then, um, actually, the second largest, uh, our, our second most popular search engine in the world is from China. That's called Baidu. Not sure if I got the pronunciation right, but... Um, 
Another big one's from Russia, uh, Yandex. Uh, please forgive my southern pronunciation. And uh, South Korea, Naver or Naver, <laughs> not sure. At any rate, so we got these different search engines uh, that we can use. Uh, and there's a lot more than that. Um, there's also what we call uh, kind of um, the three parts of the search engine. Uh, one is the web crawling part. So these search engines, uh, they have to look over the web to find content. And it's called automated uh, spider programs. And they index. That just means they put all this data into a big database uh, so they can access it quickly. Okay, so when we do a search, it actually looks in this database. It looks in this index when you enter these words. So you might think, hey, you know, how do these search engines find this stuff? Um, I type it in, and all of a sudden they got 100 or a billion matches. But it's just through their uh, index. Okay, so they actually have it, uh, a database that uh, has all this content in it. So a pretty big database, but probably not as big as the whole World Wide Web, right? All right, so let's mosey on. See what we got next in store for y'all. Okay, so you know, there's lots and lots of search engines. There's also specialized search engines. Okay, they focus on a certain topic, and um, this is probably good because you know you're never sure about what's out there. So they have one that's kid friendly. Uh, this is one of many examples. Uh, maybe one for their environment or um, what else we got, say medicine, or patents, for example. But again, you're just not sure uh, what you're getting if you go to a regular website. OK, so how, how do you know, or how, how do you kind of figure out what you're getting, what you're looking at? Is it legit or not? OK, so there's some criteria we, got, we can think about. But the final call, I mean, you gotta, you got to think about it. OK, there's no real. Um, at least not yet, there's no way to tell if a website's legit. Like, there's not really a rating system yet, although I hear they're working on that, okay? All right, so how can we figure out if a website is legit or not? Well, we want to evaluate the content of that web page, and there's five kind of general guidelines we can use. Uh, one, is it accurate? So is someone reviewing it? Okay, like Wikipedia, they have a lot of people reviewing it. Can you contact the person that's uh, in charge of that website? Okay, if they don't leave their contact information, maybe something's up, right? Uh, authority, okay, so is it under a certain organization uh, that's uh, publishing this, so to speak? Um, you can check the author. Are they an expert in the field, or are they just, you know, a 10-year-old who just made the website? Not that, you know, 10-year-olds can be experts on things. They can. Uh, objectivity, so what are the goals of the site? You know, if there's a lot of advertising, you got to start thinking, well, maybe something's up. Yeah, why, why are they, you know, trying to sell me so much stuff on this thing? What else? Let's see. So another one is currency. Well, is it, has it been updated? I mean, um, is it, you know, dating back from 1991 or something, you know? Um, ancient history, yeah. And the links, do the links work? You can tell from the links if things have been updated lately. And then last one, um, kind of look at the balance of text and images. You know, think um, or, or try to figure out is, is, is this thing free or not? Do we need special software? Okay, can you view it with any browser? So typically, if it's a legit website, they want to get the message out to as many as people as possible. Uh, there's also the issue of accessibility. Usually organizations um, are you know required by law to make websites uh, accessible as possible okay so that means different browsers uh, different platforms is it can you see it on a mobile device can I see it on my laptop can I see it on my desktop um, that kind of thing so those are things to think about you know there's not right now a specific uh, test or rating system that we have uh, we might have that in the future. We'll see. Okay, so how about if we have a fake website? How can we tell it's a fake website? Let's see. So uh, besides the things I covered, the, the, those five uh, criteria, there's other things uh, to look out for with a bogus 
or a fake website. All right, so one thing is keep, keep your software updated, uh, your virus uh, software, um, as well as other software will kind of tell you if you're on um, um, a website that's kind of dodgy. And then also, uh, if you're doing any kind of monetary um, stuff, okay, like the bank, or if you're buying stuff online, make sure it's a secure website. It's, you should see HTTPS. Okay, look out for that S, it's for secure, and that little padlock symbol. Look out for both of those uh, when you're doing um, anything with money. Okay, a couple other things to look out for. For some reason, um, you know, there's misspelled words a lot on fake websites. You think they'd at least get a spell checker to do that. But, you know, people are getting smarter lately on that. The logos may look kind of funny, kind of off, uh, not what you're used to. Um, Look for reviews. Okay, a lot of websites are, have you know reviews or comments at the bottom. You can look there to see if it's legit or not. Uh, or look on the other websites that talk about this website. And in, a, in particular, do not click on a website arrived in your email. Uh, finally, we can check and see the URL if you're up on that, if the address looks good or not. At any rate, so I just want to emphasize one more time, uh, particularly if you get um, uh, a website address in your email, don't click on it. That's, that's a real no-no. Okay, I hope that uh, uh, helped you guys with uh, websites, and we'll see y'all um, later.